And there you have it. Get on plane, hit good shots. Going back a few years to the Simple Secrets tape, two excellent downswing keys. Swing from the top and swing to the finish. Now I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term hitting from the top. Now a lot of this stems from the fact that players don't really understand that it's a complete swing, a backswing and a downswing combined together. It's not a case of getting to the top and then coming down. We see so many golfers who lunge at the ball from the top of the swing, particularly slices. They don't really release the club from the top of the swing, and as a result get into a position where they have to release the club early through the ball, and their club head passes their hands and they have a very weak hit. So that hitting from the top is really a bad problem. Now you can cure that quite easily by thinking in terms of once you get to the top of the swing of straightening the right arm as you change direction. So as you swing back, straighten that right arm. The straightening of this right arm allows the club head to catch up to the grip end as you approach impact. If you get into this position, as we see many great players, they look like they're coming into this position, into the ball into this position, but they then release the club. If you simply try to pull it down and get into this position, you'll be hitting it from the top. So remember, learn to swing from the top, not hit from the top. Straighten that right arm, and in actual fact, as you come down, you'll find that the club head is catching up to the hands, and you'll look like those great players look. So that will give you maximum speed through impact. So we want to learn to swing from the top. In actual fact, a little drill which I like people to work on, particularly slices, is to tee the ball up and then just take a 7 or an 8 iron and hit a couple of shots, feeling that you're actually straightening the right arm subtly from the top of the swing. Keep moving as you're doing it, but it's a great way of changing direction. So let's see how we do. Now, it might be a little hard to get used to at first, but that little exercise will really train you to get the feeling of swinging from the top. So when you get a ball down here and you're swinging with two hands on, you'll get, hopefully, the same sensation. Now, try that sensation of straightening your right arm and swinging it from the top. It's an easy thought. You can try it on the golf course, and I'm sure you'll like the feel of it. When I watch many amateurs hit balls, they look a little like this. They have a very short, restricted follow-through, with no real acceleration through the impact area. You know, the key really is to hit good shots. Certainly, you have to have club head speed through impact. If you have this short finish, there's no question that the club is decelerating coming into the ball. It's very much like a 100-meter runner. If they had to run to the line, they'd actually be slowing down before they got to it. What they try to do is explode through it. So the same way with the golf swing. You must try to make sure that you hit through the shot, not at the ball. Your job is not done once you've got here. Your job is only done once you've completed this position here. Now what I'd like to actually see, in actual fact, is the club to actually bounce and hit yourself on the neck. If many players could do that, their thought would be to accelerate the club all the way to this position. They wouldn't just pose here. Now that means if they've done that, there's more acceleration where it counts, right where the ball is. So to help you to do this, why don't you tee up three or four balls in a row. You can either tee them up or just leave them on the turf, and then focus all your attention on swinging right through to the finish. You know, the difficult thing with the game of golf is that the ball is stationary. It should be easier, so we think. But you know, when that ball's stationary, we tend to put all our energy into hitting at the ball. With other moving ball sports, like tennis for instance, when we're moving to meet the ball, we will swing through it. But with golf, there is that tendency to slow down, and obviously as a result, the follow-through will be short. So now when you hit these four shots here, put all your attention on swinging through and accelerating through to the finish, trying to bounce the club on your neck as you do so. And step up to each shot there, don't waste much time. Don't put any focus on any other part of the swing. Put everything into swinging through to the finish. It's also a very easy swing thought when you're on the golf course. So let's see how we do.
So there you go. Now remember, when you're on the golf course, think. Swing all the way to the finish. By hitting those four balls in a row, you can put all your attention into that area. Make sure you bounce the club off your neck, off your back, and you know then you've accelerated through the ball. Try it, I'm sure you'll like it. Well, here we are. Here's the meat of the subject, a tee shot. How are we going to get those extra yards? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of tips how to do it. Well, if there's any shot that good players or poor players want to know about is a tee shot, Nick. They want to know how to hit it long and straight because certainly this shot sets you up for your round more than anything else. Well, first of all, just take care of that driver. It's been awful good to me the last two years, huh? Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got any spikes. Well, I can worry. see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the big thing that I see with players setting up to the ball with a driver, a good example is somebody goes up and hits balls for an hour and a half and they probably hit maybe wedges through, you know, five irons, say, and then they get starting to practice with their driver and they set up in the same way. So the fact of the matter is you've got to learn to set up differently with the driver. Your weight pretty even and you've got everything level here. In other words, you're not tucked in behind it enough. It's very difficult to really get behind the ball because a lot of players I see who set up to it very much in a similar way to an iron, they tend to swing it back here and never get behind the ball and they hang on their left side in a reverse pivot situation. So they're really using a lot of arms in order to propel the golf ball or to propel the golf club in actual fact. So the key being, I think, is it all in the setup, learning to set up to it where you've got the ball forward, a little wider stance, a little bit more weight back on the right side, and if anything, the hand slightly behind the ball, because this enables you then to really wind up and get behind it. And also, I think a lot of people are worried about trying to keep their head too still on this shot. Because certainly, if you watch every great player, for the most part, especially with the driver, there's going to be a little bit of head movement off the ball to really get back into the right side. So that enables you then to really give the ball a good hit up the back of the ball, staying behind it. And remember, with the driver, we're trying to sweep it, aren't we, and hit it on the upswing. One of the things that I've always liked about the driver, David, is it's the only club in the bag that you can put the ball in the tee. It's always clean ball, you've got it on a tee, and it's always on a flat surface. So of all the clubs in your bag, this one should be the easiest one to become consistent with. Yeah, that's right, in theory. So uh, come on, let's go ahead and do it. Okay. I know you're a great driver of the ball, so uh, show them how it's done. Well, as you said, what I like to have is a little bit of my weight on the back, on the back foot. So I'm at about 60-40 here, even 55-45, but a little more weight on the right foot. And you can see, instead of having my hands in front of the ball like I would with an iron, or right above the ball, I might even have them slightly behind the ball here. You can see that my spine is just angled slightly off the vertical. So and my, to the right. Correct. To the right. And, okay. and that my shoulder tilt is, might, might be just a little more than I would have with my eyes. Okay. And that's going to encourage me when I get into the hitting position to hit right at the back of the ball, on, almost on the upswing. Okay, right. So you really feel like you get behind it when you're driving well, don't you? Always feel like I'm, as you said earlier, I'm probably two or three inches behind the ball or have moved off the ball, I feel like, two or three inches, um, right. which will get, help me to get that full turn. Right, so, I mean, the whole key is to getting all that weight back into the right side. All right, see if we can do one here. Yeah. Okay. So a little more weight on the right side. I think one of the things when a, a player gets a driver in their hands, they tend to create a lot of tension there because they feel they should hit it hard. I mean, the key, certainly you, wanna, you do want to hit it hard, but you want to get behind it and trust your mechanics to create the club head speed, correct? Right. You never want to hold the club too firmly, although it might appear at times that I hold the club really hard. My waggle looks a little hard and that I actually have enough flexibility in my wrists to let the club sit at the top of the swing. Yeah, so you grip it fairly softly. Here's a good one. Well, that's great. And again, I've got a good balance here. Final, always a good sign when you've hit a good shot that you have good balance. If golfers were to be granted one wish, I bet it would be I want to hit my tee shots longer. Well, this is certainly possible. What I see with many amateur golfers is they set up to a tee shot as if they're hitting an iron shot. 
basically with an iron shot you want to get the ball pretty much in the center you want your weight fairly even and your hand slightly ahead this allows for one to actually hit down on the ball and to squeeze the ball off the turf and take a divot now with a driver what we're trying to do is an actual fact is try to hit up on the ball sweep the ball away therefore we need to learn to set the ball forward in our stance and our weight behind on our right side now here's a simple little drill to help you to get into this position all you've got to do is find an uphill lie and position yourself in such a way as if you're trying to hit the ball on an upslope. So what I'm doing here, certainly I've got the ball position would be forward, but my weight is well on my right side and I feel my right side set down and low. This will encourage me now to swing up on it. And that is so important if you hit good tee shots. Now, if we can duplicate that same sensation over the ball, we should hit some perfect tee shots. Okay, now I'm going to have the same sensation that I'm on the upslope. Sit up to it, ball forward, maybe my hands level or slightly behind the ball. A little more weight on my right side, left shoulder nice and high. Boy, that felt easy. Now you can do this on the practice tee, or you can even do it on the golf course. So if you're having problems with your tee shots, head for the hills. Well, you've hit a perfect tee shot. Now, the shot to the green. How to play great iron shots. From my videotape, Simple Secrets, I'm going to show you how to do it. There's no better feeling in golf than a crisply struck iron shot. If you want to shoot low scores, you've got to make lots of birdies. And to make lots of birdies, you've got to be a good iron player. All great players throughout history have been great iron players. The fact is they're able to strike the ball solidly, but also control the distance that they hit the golf ball. Many amateurs that I see, they tend to hit the ball with a scoopy type of action where the club head reaches the ball before the hands do. They're trying to lift the ball in the air, and this does not produce solid shots. You cannot control the distance and the ball sort of hovers in the air. The key really is to make sure that when you make contact with the ball, that your left hand is ahead of the club head. Let me show you. At the point of contact, the left hand must be flat and leading that club head. This way you get the correct strike on the ball. You squeeze the ball off the turf and the ball takes off on a piercing trajectory. So one way you can actually work on this is with this little drill. Put the ball back in your stance and then with a short iron, hit what I would term a little punch shot. Feeling that your left hand is ahead of the club head. You'll get the strike that you're looking for. Put another ball just opposite the ball that you're trying to hit. In that way, you can determine where your divot starts because your divot should be after the ball. Many players, the divot is actually behind the ball or underneath the ball. You've got to make sure that your divot starts after it, and it will be if your left hand is ahead of the club head as you make contact. So try a couple of these little shots there. Ball back, hands forward, and just a little three-quarter punch type shot. Now you can see my divot was ahead of the ball. Let's try one more. Now the feelings that I had with that little punch shot were that my left hand was ahead of the club head and my left wrist was flat and bowed. You can see it here. No way must you get your left wrist in this position through impact. Remember, impact's a moment of truth. A lot of players have some strange looking swings but to hit solid shots with your irons, you have to have that left hand ahead of the club head at impact. Now, if you can transfer that same feeling and image to the full shot, just watch how crisply you strike your iron shots. Well, there you have it. The secret for good iron play Make sure you get your left hand ahead of the club head at impact. Unfortunately, golf doesn't always go according to plan. Some bad shots tend to sneak in here and there. For instance, your slice, how to get rid of it, and some other speciality shots, which if you learn to play, will really help your scoring.